this is my 2001 Royal Enfield bullet that we're finally going to be doing some work on to, to get it back onto the road. In this video, we're going to be fixing the flat tire in the rear and a couple other miscellaneous parts that over the years we just never ordered. Things like the boot on the carburetor that are sealed with duct tape and also the transmission needing to be adjusted after a service we did previously. I ordered a couple of parts. One of the biggest parts was the sump breather line, which was a garden hose and leaked like crazy and one of the biggest oil leaks coming from the bike. After that, it was time to take the rear wheel off. You pull the pin, you take the first nut off, and then after that, you just hold the other side, take the shaft off. I went to my friend's place, put it on his tire stand, and it replaced the inner tube. I couldn't find proper tires for the bike, so for now, we're going to leave it. But when we do seriously ride it, I will be replacing them because they are a little old. As you can see in the picture, the tube actually broke from the valve stem, and that was the reason why the bike was no longer holding air. After that, we got it all fixed up. The next step was to put oil back into the bike. If you guys remember, we parked this motorcycle inside of a liquor store for the winter, and now it's finally getting unwinterized i guess i could say the very first step was to change the oil filter which i did not do previously which is located just in this weird position next to the exhaust you can clean the filters or just change the felt from inside but they were really cheap it was like 10 bucks for like six of them so i just bought brand new ones and put that back on then we moved on to the biggest thing, which was the transmission tweaking because it did leak like crazy. I drained the oil out and we didn't really know why. We did swap the shifter from the left side to the right side. The right side is the proper side on this motorcycle and that seemed to be causing some issues. We started to open up the examination holes just to kind of see what was going on and then ended up deciding to just take off the entire front plate. In order to take the front plate off, you need to take the clutch adjustment off and then you can access everything to pull the front of the plate out. Once the front plate was off, we realized a couple of different things. The first thing was in the future, we're going to have to come back and do a little bit more work to this transmission to make the shifter feel just a little bit more crisp. The second thing we realized was there was no gasket sealing it back up, which is probably where our leak was from. Just an oversight from when we did it previously because we probably didn't have a gasket. We just made our own gasket, which is going to hold out of gasket paper and sealed the transmission back up. I could not find proper specs for the transmission gear oil anywhere. People were just saying, don't use this or don't use this, but there was no specified actual right answer. I had a Royal and Field service manual that told me to use SAE90 transmission gear oil, and that's exactly what I did. After sealing the bike all back up, theoretically, it should be all good to go, and I can actually go out and ride. And after all of that work, it brings us to here, where the motorcycle is, I would say, 85 to 90% done. Last night we did some of the transmission work, and as you guys saw, we lifted this whole faceplate off, but we did not adjust only the shifter uh, a couple of notches down, but also the clutch is grabbing way too soon. It's like oddly slipping second gear, so I'm gonna have to figure out why it's doing that and take it all apart and then put it all back together, so that's gonna be fun. But for now, I mean, it's running very nicely. This motorcycle is fitted with an aftermarket carb currently because of the aftermarket muffler that it used to have. The aftermarket muffler used to have used to spit massive flame balls and be just obnoxiously loud. It was loud to the point where it was kind of hard to ride anywhere. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty funny, but it just wasn't usable whatsoever. It literally sounded like a gunshot going off every single time it backfired. The reason why we didn't change the carburetor back is because, well, I'm going to, in the next video, put the aftermarket muffler back on because it is entertaining to hear and see. So we're going to be making this thing spit massive flame balls again, but after that, it'll go back to stock just because it's just too obnoxious to ride. It's not practical. 
but it's basically fixed after a long time. The spike hasn't been ridden in a few years just because of all the little stuff that it's always needed. I tried riding it last year and the tube shredded itself, as you guys saw. And then the year before that, well, we switched over the linkages of the transmission from the left side to the right side because obviously the transmission is on the right side here and this is how it's supposed to be before us models they ran a shaft through the bottom and instead of having the brake on this side they had the shifter on that side and it was very sloppy we got the kit we swapped it back to where it's supposed to be and with just the settings never came out right even still now got to dial them in even more than we already did then another thing that we were kind of uh playing with last night that we couldn't get is this bolt here I don't know what size it is, it's like a 26 or something like that. And this adjusts the chain, and the chain is uh, very sloppy, which is why I didn't ride it too far. I haven't ridden it too far, and why we're not going to ride it in this video is because the chain is extremely sloppy, and the clutch isn't grabbing correctly. If I come here and turn the bike on, the bike is warm. Pretty loud bike, even just from the factory. Running great. I thought I filled it with too much oil. I gotta double check the oil before I start riding it again. It might have to take a little bit out. I'm running pretty nicely though. It doesn't feel like a modern bike, even though this is like a 2003 or 2001. I forget what the exact year is. When you ride these bikes, you kind of see why at the time the Hondas ended up killing them out. This was and still is the last surviving old British bike. Now they changed them, but was the last one and well there you guys have it a little bit more work that needs to be done in the next video we're gonna go out for a proper ride with an obnoxious exhaust on the back of this if you did find this video informational make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel as always and i'll see you guys in the next one